Hello all, myself Janil. Let us discuss second video of permeability and seepage. In the first part, we have understood basic definitions and different terms related to permeability and seepage. Let us remind that permeability is nothing but the ability to permit the water of soil that is permeability. Let us understand a very fundamental law and its assumptions that is Darcy's law. Assumptions for Darcy's laws are like this. First assumption, soil is saturated. So Darcy assumed soil is saturated. Flow through soil should be laminar. Flow should be continuous and steady. Now, laminar, continuous and steady. Let us understand them. Laminar means the flow going in a one direction and it is going stably line like in a lamina like in a line where continuous and steady continuous means without any break and steady means without so much of disturbance so flow should be like this temperature is assumed as 27 degrees celsius and total cross sectional area is considered here so these are assumptions to understand darcy's law now, what is Darcy's law? For laminar flow through saturated soil mass, the discharge per unit time is always proportional to the hydraulic gradient. So, it means to say Q is always proportional to I. Right? So, he gave the equation Q is equal to K into I into A. Where A is what? Total cross sectional area K that is coefficient of permeability and I is very well known that is hydraulic gradient. Now in this image we can see that there is inflow going from this and outflow is coming out from this. Now here H1 is the entry height and H2 is the exit height. So difference between them will be known as hydraulic head H, H1 minus H2. Soil sample length can be measured here. There is L. Now we know uh, H and L will give you hydraulic gradient I. Right? Cross sectional area of soil sample also can be measured. So we can find out Q, I, and A. Same way we can find out K and vice versa. So doing Q by A will make you V is equal to K into I because q by a will be velocity coefficient of permeability k so for k we can say that the average velocity of a flow through total cross sectional area of soil mass under unique hydraulic gradient is called coefficient of permeability so when unit hydraulic gradient is considered i should be 1 so, we can say V is equal to Ki and I if it is 1, then V is equal to K and coefficient of permeability can be defined as velocity in that case. Its unit will be centimeter per second or meter per day. Validity of Darcy's law. Now, if it is valid and if it is valid, then in which cases the Darcy's law can be useful? Because some of the laws are not every time universal. Some of the laws are specific too. So this is also like that. Here, first validity, the maximum diameter of the particle for the flow to be laminar is 0.5 mm. So larger particles than 0.5 mm cannot be considered under Darcy's law because laminar flow will not be there. In coarse sands, gravels, cobbles and boulders, the flow may be turbulent and Darcy's law may not be applicable. So, in those cases, the Darcy's law is also not valid. In fine sands, silts and clay, the flow is laminar and the Darcy's law is applicable. So, it is limited up to sand, silt and clay. Let us move forward. Permeability of stratified soil deposits. 
Now, first of all, we have to understand stratified soil deposit. Now, stratified means it is in different strata. Strata, nothing, are but layers. Strata are different layers. You must have seen rocky soil or mountains with these type of strati stratified soil deposits. So, these are this. Horizontal permeability or permeability parallel to bedding planes. So, when we are considering horizontal permeability or we can say permeability parallel to bedding planes. So, if the bedding planes are this, then permeability in this direction should be considered. Here, this figure is showing like this. Here, you can see four different strata, four different layers. Z1, Z2, Z3 and Zn. These are the thicknesses of layers. So, we can say from Z1 to Zn layers are taken and individual permeabilities are K1, K2, K3 up to Kn. Now, if it is inflow and it is outflow, then we have to understand that how it will work in the horizontal bed or horizontal permeability case. In practically, you can see this image in mountainous soil or rocky soil. You must have seen these type of stratified soil deposits. These are different layers you can see, right? So, we are talking about this. Now, if we are talking about horizontal permeability, the flow is passing horizontally. And formula of coefficient of permeability can be given as Kh is equal to K1Z1 plus K2Z2 plus K3Z3 and up to KnZn upon total Z. Total Z is nothing but total depth of all layers. Here, K1 is K1Z1 that is corresponding to first layer and k and z n that is corresponding to last layer. So, this is how we can find out horizontal permeability. Permeability of soil stratified soil deposits. Now, it is case of vertical permeability or we can say permeability perpendicular to the bedding planes. Here, the flow is passing perpendicularly, right. In this figure, you can see Flow is part, passing vertically and this is inflow and this is outflow. Now, same way, four layers are there, Z1, Z2, Z3 and up to Zn. Same way, individual permeabilities will also stay same, K1, K2, K3 and up to Kn. Now, total thickness is taken as Z. It will look as same as we have discussed. Now, for this, formula can be given as Kv is equal to Z upon Z1 by K1 plus Z2 by K2 up to Zn by Kn, where Z is total thickness or total depth and Z1, K1 are for individual layers. So, this is vertical permeability. Now, Kh is always greater than Kv because horizontal permeability will always be higher than the vertical one because here resistance will be more compared to that. Effective permeability can also be found out with the help of horizontal and vertical permeability. Let's say Ke is equal to under root Kh into Kv. So, in sums, in numericals, sometimes effective permeability are also used. So, that's it for permeability vertical and horizontal. Let us move forward. Determination of coefficient of permeability. Now, how to determine coefficient of permeability, right? Let us see these methods. Laboratory methods. Let us talk about laboratory. So, if we want to do the experiment in laboratory, then two methods can be done. There is constant head permeability test and falling head permeability test. If you are doing it in field, then pumping in test and pumping out test are there. If you are finding it out with your data only, you are not on field or not in lab, you are finding out at your office or any place where you have data and you are finding it out indirectly, then indirect methods would be like this computation from particle size and computation from consolidation test data. Let us see 
some of these methods as constant head permeability test which is done for coarse grained soil mainly or having high permeability uh, soils here in this figure you can see a device doing constant head permeability test in that here constant head is maintained here overhead tank can be seen here there is an inlet of that and this is an overflow now if you are passing some water from here some fluid from here it will be filled up to here only after that it will be overflowed so some constant head is maintained here now while doing test this is known as stand pipe this is our soil sample this is called bottom tank and this is measuring cylinder now when we are starting the test initial stage of test the valve will be closed when you want to flow the water you will open the valve and water will flow still the constant head of these height h will be maintained and from that this formula will give you results k is equal to q by t l by h into 1 by a where q there is quantity of collected water taken in centimeter cube t time for test so you have to take a note of time which is starting time and ending time l there is length or height of soil specimen here you can see l is shown h there is constant head which is maintained a that is cross sectional area of soil sample that can be measured let us understand the second test which is falling head permeability test it is generally preferred for lesser permeable materials like fgs for example of fgs we can say clay silt etc now this device is doing falling head permeability test this is funnel this is stand pipe again this is a valve which will be opened only when you want to test this is soil sample here out valve outlet valve is also provided and measuring cylinder is provided in this case when you start the water flow you have to take the note of time t1 then h1 the head will be measured and at the ending after the closing of valve time 2 and h2 head 2 should be measured now this formula will give permeability from this k is equal to 2.3 small a into capital l upon capital a into small t log 10 base h1 by h2 where a cross sectional area of stand pipe which is small a l there is length of soil sample large a capital a there is cross sectional area of soil sample as we know t time interval between h1 and h2 h1 initial head and h2 final head so that's it for this lecture we will understand this chapter in next video thank you